Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. I'm Will Patterson, I'm a hand lettering artist, logo designer, and I make these YouTube videos for you. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create this ultra modern and very stylish looking logo icon design. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Click the link down below in the description to get 10% off your first order. Before we get into the video, I just wanna give a huge thank you to you guys who watch and have subscribed. About 70% of you guys have not yet subscribed to the channel, which is a bit strange. So you see that big red button down below? Go and click that and turn on the bell button as well, which will just notify you every time I upload a video to the channel. Subscribing and turning the post notifications on is completely free as well. So don't worry about that. Okay, so let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is create a brand new document. I like to choose a 1920 by 1080 document. It makes it a bunch easier for me to navigate and just be able to have a standard document size. Once you open up a new document, what you need to do is have swatches ready. Now swatches are the colors that you see in this panel, but the swatches in here aren't the ones that we want to use. So I've gone ahead and pre-made some swatches for you and I'll link them down below where you can either download or just see the color profile. Alternatively, you could screenshot the screen during the process and you can take with the color picker the actual color from the logo and work that gradient in yourself. But if you download it, all you need to do is go to this, you go press that little bit there, and then down below that you can't see right now, it says other library. Click other library, and then we're gonna go to my desktop where all of my swatches are, swatches for tutorial, and that's what it should be called. And you'll get this other bar here. So I'm gonna get rid of this one and just switch it out for this. Now what we want is the swatches down here. So we've got all the swatches here that we need, but technically we only need one. And we've got all the other colors that are made of this swatch. So I've given you multiple colors that you can use for this effect. Okay, right into the actual tutorial bit. So I'm gonna switch my fill and the stroke so I can get a black fill and I don't want a stroke at all. The next thing we're going to do is create the letter D. Now the great thing about this sort of tutorial is that it doesn't have to be the letter D. It can be any other letter and this is quite a popular version of doing a logo that is very abstract and artsy but also very professional and clean so don't feel like you have to copy everything that i'm doing here use your own shapes do your own thing and see what you come up with so to create the letter d i'm going to simply go ahead and just make a square holding shift now with this square i'm going to turn it into this blue color here the blue color is an important color that we're going to be using we're not going to worry about the gradients just yet because we don't need to we just want to get the shape down now you've got your square that is equal on both sides it doesn't matter how big it is just scroll in so you can get to these little nodes press a or go to your direct selection tool select those two and you'll see this little sort of bubble in the middle there that means that when you click that and drag it it's going to make it circular and we want to do that for one side so we want to circularize one side of the logo then we're going to select the other side just like so and we're going to do it ever so slightly so we can get that round shape and if you've gone too much you just select them again making sure it's with your direct selection tool you can actually create these cool circles or arcs and rounded corners. The next thing we're gonna do is go to your selection tool, select it and copy and paste it. Now to copy and paste, you press Command C and then Command F. When you press Command F instead of Command V or Control V, you're actually pasting the shape right on top of the shape that you've just copied from. So it's paste in front. With this shape, we're gonna change the color to this really light blue teal color. Reason being, we need to be able to see where we're working. And this is where the effect comes in. We're gonna take the shape and we wanna get rid of half of it because behind it, we've got this bl blue one here, this dark blue one. What we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead from sort of like in the middle around here, it can be either in the middle or out. We're just gonna create an, a square basically. Then we're gonna select this square, this translucent or cyan, whatever you wanna call it, blue, and press Shift and M, or go to the Shape Builder tool over here. What this will do is it'll let us build shapes from other shapes or take away shapes from other shapes. So what we're going to do is instead of having it so it's got the plus button, as you can see there, we're gonna press Option or Alt, get rid of this one and get rid of this. And all I did there was just click. Okay, now that doesn't look anything like the logos because we need to build it. So what we're going to do is create some more squares. Press your M or go to the rectangle tool. And from about here all the way across to here, we're gonna create a square. 
and then we're going to use the round corners and we want to round them all the way and that's what gives us this round effect right there now the premise of this is that we're going to be giving optical illusions to ourselves to make it look like something this can be difficult at the start but bear with me we'll get there all you need to do is make sure you're on the selection and we're going to copy and paste it down by pressing alt and just dragging whilst holding alt and I've got the smart guides turned on so it's going to instantly snap to this shape. All I'm then going to do with this shape to give the illusion that it's cutting out of the blue shape, I'm genuinely just going to go ahead, make sure it's selected, press the eyedropper tool and click on this one. When I click away, you can see it's giving the illusion, if I move it further this way, that it's cut from here. Now you might not be able to see it yet, but I'll, I'll carry on and show you. We're going to go ahead and alt drag this again till it snaps, we're gonna move this one further out. We're gonna go alt drag this one again, move it inwards to this way. And you can start to see the shape is building up, but we're doing this just from piling shapes on and giving the illusion of something that's happening. Again, you can do this with anything that you need to do. We're just building a shape here. I'm gonna come down here, make sure it snaps to this one. I'm going to bring this in and we want to make sure these are kind of all a bit different. We don't want to keep them the same. So all you need to do is basically run away with this and carry on doing it. So you can see here at the bottom, we've got a bit of an issue because if we were to go ahead and select this and bring it to the bottom here, we're going to have basically a bit of a shape going on there a bit strange. Now, what you can do is restart this and basically make it so the shape works all the way through and it's divided perfectly. But what I'm going to do is be a bit cheeky with it and I'm going to make, basically manipulate this shape and cheat a little bit. So I'm going to do that by going up to object. We're going to go to flatten transparency. This will allow us to manipulate this shape a bit more. I'm going to manipulate this and I'm going to do that. And that's going to make it basically give the illusion that it's working together right there and we can even like extend this out if we needed to like so now that we've got those shapes you can start to see the illusion taking effect so how do we now go ahead from this where we've got loads of different shapes all in there how do we make it so this is one shape and this is another well what we need to use is something called the shape builder tool which is what we've previously used but in a different way all we're going to do is select the whole artwork now I'm going to press shift and M. You can go up here to the left. I want this to connect to this shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag from this shape to this shape. And you can see there it's basically kept that shape. And I'm going to carry on doing this for all of the blue ones here. For this side, I'm going to do the same thing and do this. You can see that the shape has changed color to the normal light blue color, but we can change that easily. Now that we've done that, we're going to select off it click on the first shape, make it dark blue again. And you can see now we've got two shapes with loads of these anchor points that we'll need to fix later. We've got two shapes like this, where they basically fit perfectly like a key. The way that we get the gradient in this is very cool and very interesting. Uh, and it's basically through the gradient buttons that I've given you. But what you can do if you want to make your own is go up to window, go to gradient, and this will give you the gradient window here. Now I'm going to select this shape as the one that I want my gradient on. And I'm going to go ahead and select one of these gradients here. I'm going to select this one here. And then what I'm going to do is just check that it works if I like it. And I do like it. So what we're going to do is create some more different speckles in there. Give it a look that it's sort of moving. And we do that through more shapes. So what we do is we go to our rectangle tool. And we're going to go ahead and create a rectangle just like we did, making sure that it snaps to both of these sides here. When you do that, you basically just copy in the width eyedropper it. So we're going to put the gradient on here. And we're going to go ahead and basically expand this just a little bit so it's not a perfect circle. And we're going to use the round function again. And you've got to keep it in line with these sort of angles here or these lines. If you don't, it will look a bit strange. And we're going to add two of these. We're going to add another one here, but we're going to make it into a real circle and we can move them around and do whatever we need. I'm holding shift to keep them correct. Now that looks all great and all, but the problem is we've got different shapes with different gradients. So we need to basically group these together. So select this shape, hold shift, select, select, press command eight 
that's going to turn it into a compound shape or a compound path where the different shapes in different areas are going to act like one shape. From here, press G. And when you press the letter G, that's the hotkey for gradient. You'll see we've got this gradient going from left to right. I want it to go from up here down. So I'm going to go from here down until we get something along the lines of what you want like this there we go we've got our d right there and it looks pretty good pretty decent very quick now to keep this from like ruining select all of your work press command g and that's going to group it so now whenever you move it it's not going to freak out on you and like move different objects another tip that i want to give you for anyone who doesn't want to use these colors but can't be bothered to basically go and change the gradients go ahead and alt drag your whole entire piece of work so you don't lose it select the work that you want to change the color go to this little wheel at the top this is the recolor artwork wheel when you're on here you'll get this sort of dialog box so we need to go to edit select this button here this is the link harmonies this will keep all the colors in the same relationship format as you change the hue of the color so we do this we're going to go ahead i'm going to move this over here. let's move it over here and i'm going to just move my hue and let go every now and then and you can see that even these look pretty cool they look a bit strange some of them i like that green one that green one was cool and press okay and now we've got a whole new different gradient logo and a different look the next thing we need to do is add some typography so this logo that i've created is just a fake one it's a pretty cliche logo but the elements that you learn inside of this really do help for creating modern design i'm going to go ahead and take this logo and make sure it's centered to the canvas by pressing these buttons up here and then i'm going to write dreamer and it's going to come up in this font and i'm just going to basically just you know bring it up a little bit now this is a really bad type you don't want this even though you've got a cool icon you want to sort of top it off with a cool sort of type or font for your logo so we do this by selecting it we're going to go up here we're going to find something and i did find a font earlier and i don't know what it was called this one is called blue regular and this typeface is very round which is what i want i want it to sort of not be too in your face i want it to just feel round and nice now the problem we've got here is we've got a few kerning issues like we normally do with logos so i'm just going to take this move some of these in together so that it fits a bit better all the way through and that looks a lot better what I'm going to now do is change this color to the base color of the icon, which is that dark blue. And there you go. You've got your full logo there. Now, what if you wanted to use this logo or this type design without it being editable text? Well, what I like to do is press shift and O, drag my artboard out, and that will drag all of my work out, select it, press command, shift and O, and then it will change those letter forms or the type into non-editable type, but a shape. And there you have it. There is your logo. You can do whatever you need to do. Make sure you do something different with this logo as well. Don't just copy what I've done. I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Everyone should have a website. It doesn't matter if you're a designer. It doesn't matter if you're just a normal person. Everyone should have a website where they can post their work, post their creative attributes onto, write stories, write blogs, sell little products that you want to sell. Everyone should have a website and Squarespace is the website for you. Squarespace allows you to create and customize beautiful websites that without being a web design genius. They've got thousands of templates to choose from. So no matter whether you're someone who just wants to write a blog, someone who wants to teach design like myself, or someone who gets client commissions through your work and your portfolio, then Squarespace is the place for you and it's super affordable. Click the link down below so you can use Squarespace for completely free to build your website and then when you do end up paying for it you get 10% off. Guys if you did enjoy this video please go ahead and share it with your designer friends making sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and all those areas. It will be great to connect with you over there. Guys hope you're having a great week. Stay safe, wash your hands, keep clean and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.